Hey everyone, and welcome back. We're painting an art race today. We're going to teach two quick things. These are really going to be fast and easy, but they're really, really, really important. The first one is just how to set up your workflow so that you have layers used for all the proper things. Nice, efficient use of layers is going to help you be a better painter in digital software, no matter what software you're using. And then the second thing we're going to look at is how to set up your resolution for printing. So what kind of pixels per inch do you need? What sort of um, measurements do you need to your canvas? And how does that work? So two quick things, it shouldn't take too long. And I'm, I, I think that the, putting the time into understanding this is really important, especially for the new digital artists. So to get this started, let's just go new painting. And when you do that, you can see that um, you get this option to use window size. And typically the default is your, your width and height. And then you have the 72 is kind of your typical or default resolution or pixels per inch. If I open up now the canvas settings, what you can see is you have a couple very important sliders. So grain size is is pretty key here. So you can see if you blow it up too much, if you go past 100%, basically it's like the normal mapping of, a normal map is like a way of creating like a faux 3D, it's like a fake 3D or fake depth in a two-dimensional layer. Um, if you go past 100%, it's gonna lose a little bit of the sharpness. So I don't usually ever go past 100%. I do like to actually shrink it down below 100% because it gives me more of like a punchy edginess to the texture of the paper surface. And roughness, I do like to play with quite a bit. In this case, I'm using the watercolor paper, and that's here, paper, watercolor, and you can change it to any type of paper you want. Um, and there's all kinds of crazy things that, um, you know, I probably will never use, but, um, there are some that for me are unbelievably important. I use them all the time, but let's go back to that watercolor one. I really think this one's pretty important. Um, so let's go then to canvas color and I want to change the canvas color to, let's kind of do something a little bit more old fashioned, do something kind of like the sepia tone background. And again, I'm gonna take the grain size down. And I'm actually gonna bring the intensity up. And as you see, as I slide that scrubber up towards 100%, I'm just gonna stop here at 55%, you get really deep uh, shadowy valleys in the tooth of the paper, which is kind of nice to paint on. Um, you can also change the lighting angle, which is basically where the virtual light is being projected. And usually the default is great. Metallic uh, makes the paper surface kind of reflective. Um, to me, it's a little bit too noisy and I don't prefer it. So I will use something like this um, and be pretty content. So let's just warm that up and lighten it up a little bit, just kind of something like this. This is really nice. Sometimes, especially if you're painting at home on a big monitor, it's hard to sort of look at, if you've got the brightness up a little bit, it's hard to look at the screen when it's all white. Um, there are reasons to tone your canvas and not. My mentor, who was like a famous Walt Disney artist, you know, you always said, don't tone your canvas. It it starts making choices for you on your on your values. Um, it starts creating value relationships kind of without your own hand dictating it. And I agree with him philosophically on that. Um, I know some people do tone their canvases all the time because it's a sort of a cheat, actually. Um, if you don't paint an area, like let's say you're, you know, you're painting like a ball or whatever. Here, we'll, we'll just paint like some random thing, right? And let's just say that you have some brush strokes that don't quite connect. Where they aren't connecting, you're gonna have like that color in here and that's gonna sort of uh, allow for little pops of color, a little bit of like visual interest without you having to do any work, especially if you use like a brightly colored, like let's say we use like a red or a pink or something, it's gonna give you like these little splashes of color and while that's really nice, it is kind of like a cheat for just kind of like finishing your painting without having to really finish your painting. Um, again, nothing wrong with it. Um, when I use a toned canvas, um, I will use it usually for a specific purpose, but I just wanted you to know that it's there. I'm going to go to edit and clear layer just to kind of back out of there so we can kind of start over. And I want to show you one more thing. So if we go to edit, crop and expand canvas, um, let's say we wanted to do something, not just sketchbook, not just doodling, you know, using your window size is a great way to just paint. You just come in, open, paint, go. And that's, that's what I do if I'm just doodling or doing digital sketchbook work. But if I want to print it, I need to have my pixels per inch set much higher. But more than that, 
I need to go and change this to print size. So if I have my, my pixels per inch at 300, look at what my maximum print size is gonna be. My screen size is, is 2,560 pixels at this many pixels per inch. That equates to eight inches by four inches. So you've got 2560 by 1410. The equivalent there is 8.5 to 4.7 inches. So it's a really tiny print. Um, mostly, and here I'm going to uncheck preserve aspect ratio. What that means is it's going to untether the, the height and the width. Um, so I can say, I, want, I know that I have a frame, for example, that is 16 inches by you know 12 inches, let's say. And then look at what we used to have here and what we will have when we hit OK. So we're enlarging the canvas by uh, we're, we're like four times as large. Um, so 188% by 220 or 255 percent. When you enlarge that, look what happens. We have we're now zoomed out 39 percent just to to 39 percent just to see the whole canvas. So you can still paint just like normal, but if you're zoomed in at 100 percent, you're going to just see a tiny piece of the canvas. And that I'm holding the space bar to, to drag my screen around when I do that and hit control minus to zoom out. And you remember what, what it was. If you just go 39% here, you can kind of see the whole canvas. Use the space bar to drag it down. This is kind of cool because um, painting in this way allows you to see the whole canvas, allows you to get an output that's very, very printable. If you're printing at 16 by 20 at 300 pixels per inch, it's going to look good or 12 by 16 or 16 by 20 or 11 by 14 or 20 by 24. You can do anything, you know, based on whatever your target output is. But the thing you need to remember is that with digital, um, your maximum size, whatever you start with, say it's 24 by 24, you want to do a two foot by two foot. Um, that's as big as it's going to get and as big as it's going to look good. So what I like to do is set up my canvas for as large as my computer will run it and paint it at that size. So that I always, you know, have the ability, say I want to send it to a, someone says, oh, I want to buy a print of that. Uh, but there was, I want it 36 by 36. So I'm going to put it in my living room over the couch with this huge, you know, whatever. Say, so I don't want to tell them, oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I can only do a 12 by 12, right? So that's important. Um, but you say you're painting on a laptop, like it's kind of a little low res or a low, low power laptop. You don't have the option to go super big on that. So you, you need to test out what your own hardware can handle. And the thing that and you can do that really easily. You just keep testing it out. You know, grab grab a new canvas, set up a new resolution, try painting with big brushes. And how you paint with big brushes here, you know, if you're if you're scrolling here, you only go up to 100 percent But if you hold shift on the and drag your styles across, you can go up to 500 percent So then you can see, hey, does that lag? Is that gonna be kind of hanging me up in my creative process? No, looks good. I can do I can do this, right? And you keep going up, 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 and just test out your own hardware. It won't take very long at all to figure out what your hardware can do. And one caveat is that with the custom brushes, now look at this lag. I'm dragging this. Do you see how jittery that is? Watch, I'll drag it. And where this, I can't even move my cursor until the, the brushwork catches up. So there's some problems and optimizations that are still needed when you're using custom brushes um, with large resolutions. And I know ArtRage is working on that. I know they're optimizing that. Um, it's just something that's kind of in progress. But I have some custom brushes that I use for like finishing work and I don't really care if they're slow because I don't use them for the whole painting. I use them more for finishing. And um, so like this kind of thing, I think it could be really nice. and. And it's cool, it works. But it's just something to be aware of. But all the pre-built brushes that you can create infinite varieties of here, 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 you know, you can do all this kind of stuff and make your own um, crazy looking brushes. Uh, those are all always gonna work. And um, so don't worry about it. You know, everything, unless you're getting deep into the custom brush stuff, you're never gonna run into the lag thing. Um, the other thing we got to talk about real quick is just like, let's say we're going to paint this. Let's say this is our plan for today. I'm going to push the space bar and drag this canvas way over to the edge. And on that way, I'm going to keep all my menus and stuff over here. 
and it's kind of a nice way to organize my my screen space now i'm going to go back to edit and then clear layer and this time i want to open up the layers palette and just show you how i would set up okay so here we are we're going to use three different layers for our paint setup um, by the way i just used the control key as a modifier to make straight lines on the keyboard but I'm gonna start with my darks. I'm gonna paint in my darks, my midtones and lights, looking for those values, lights, midtones, and darks, almost as if everything is a square, as you can see here in the demonstration. That matters more than anything else. It doesn't matter if you're painting a cat, a dog, a paintbrush, a house, an airplane. You're looking for light, midtone, and dark. And as you can apply those as simply as possible, you're gonna have more and more success. What you'll be doing here then is having one layer for your line work, one layer for your color work, and then one layer on top, as you can see here, to play with blend modes. This is sort of a special effects layer where you can change the blend mode from normal, which is just gonna layer paint on top of paint, to overlay, which will sort of multiply the darks and lights to create more contrast. There's a ton of different blend modes. You can explore all of them to see which ones you like. I like to use them on a separate layer so that you can kind of play with these special effects to kind of push your values a little bit. It's pretty helpful. Um, then when you export, you're gonna to wanna to go File, Export, JPEG. You can export a JPEG or a PNG. Here I've set my JPEG quality to 100. Export the file again as a JPEG and there you have it. And that's all you need to know for everything we did today. Hopefully you enjoyed it, you guys. Um, if you enjoy this channel, check out my Patreon. If you enjoy this channel, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for everything and best wishes.